Genau. Es geht weiter im Programm. Ähm, wir haben jetzt Preben von Hindenburg da, der uns äh, eine Einführung, Übersicht geben wird. Daher viel Spaß und Applaus bitte. Thank you. I'm going to start with a poll. How many of you have actually heard about Hindenburg Journalist? And how many are actually using it? That's depressing. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually hoping to. So, the whole principle of when we actually started creating Hindenburg Journalist was that we were trying to find a software that's usable by people that are not technical and not used to computers at all. So, we actually started looking for something, uh, preferably open source, so that it can use in third world countries and so on. Um, but we actually couldn't find anything. And Nick, the co-founder of Hindenburg, he asked me, well, you can write software, couldn't you write something like that? How, ca how hard can it be? And I said, very. So, but we started out with the principle of we shouldn't have any um, keynotes or bars and beats and something like that because all the other, or many of the other programs are actually made primarily for music. So we wanted to make something very simple, but yet advanced enough to actually make good sound. Um, one of the basic principles is that what you see is what you get. So here we have some sound. People have been asking this question for thousands of years. So, and if you want to make it louder or leiser, um, you can, of course, use a slider out here, but that's not the principle of it. The thing is that if you want to make it lower, you make it lower. If you want to make it higher, uh, hold on. That was too early. Higher, you turn it up. Uh, if you want to make a fade in, you grab the start point and you make a fade in. And now I accidentally actually made the other thing is that you can easily duck without going into volume automation tracks and making points and stuff. So, and of course there's full undo on everything. Um, Another thing that we really wanted to do that we couldn't find in other programs was to make it easy to organize when you are going to edit a lot of material. So for this we have the clipboards over here. And the principle is that you can find something that you want Gee, where to. We might be able to answer this question. I think it is totally impossible that we are alone. There are about 200 thousand million stars in our galaxy and so i found a section set an in uh, out point and what i can do now is actually actually drag that and if i had a mouse i would actually be able to drag it all the way over there mm. this is a bad demo so now i've got this section in my clipboard group, I can go in and rename it. I can find another section. Drag that into the group. And so on. And then when you're done going through all your raw material, you can actually go in, say, now we are starting from scratch by deleting. And then you can pull in your individual clips and arrange them. Of course, we have multi-tracks, um, so you can pull in other materials. I still don't have a mouse. Uh, 
and look, no hands. <laughs> what you actually saw was that there's another feature that we made, is that if you use an ordinary, thank you, <laughs> um, if you use a normal editor, uh, what you experience is that you've got your speak and then you pull in something uh, from a CD or from an MP3 and it's way too loud. So what we should actually get here is that without touching the volume, I should actually have something that sounds balanced. The stars in our galaxy. Even if it was a very loud number, but also if we... crossfade to something else. So there is other intelligent life and they're there to be fun. They're, they're there to be fun. And this is where my speak is, so I'll just go in and make it duck like this. And now we've got to show. So there is other intelligent life, and they're there to be found. So, again, what you see is what you get. No secret menus, no drawing curves. You can move everything around still, um, if you find out that you needed to change anything. You can select stuff, move around. So, what should we talk about next? Metadata. If you are making a podcast, you want all the nice fields in your, your metadata for your MP3 file, or also if you're publishing stuff. Um, so this is where you can fill in everything. We can actually see if I can find a picture. Um, yes and no. You can actually create a template if you start by uh, with a scratch session, enter all your uh, common data, and then save that as a file. Uh, you can actually start by selecting that file every time you want to make an episode of that podcast. So it's kind of a tem it's kind of a template. Okay, that will be a feature request from my side at that point, because uh, you have different podcasts, different styles, you just start working and only at the end you're saying, okay, now I'm putting up the metadata, and that would be nice to then just pull out some text file or just drag down something of the pre-listed like you have there. Um, I, would, I would say make another preset for podcast Mirko and then you just grab that and have the basics already implemented. Yes. So it's, it's uh, actually on our to-do list. Uh, we actually have another program which is uh, audio book creator um, but it's using the same framework and for that piece of software we actually made the template function so all we need is actually just to port it over there. <laughs> So it'll probably be getting into the software for within the next few months. So, and once you've um, filled out all your major data, you can actually go in and create a podcast directly from Hindenburg. We do have what we call one-click publish, because if it really works, it should be one click and you are all set. But of course you need a few more clicks to actually set it up. So you can either choose a normal MP3 podcast that a lot of people prefer, or you can choose the AAC, which is a, the enhanced podcast. What you do is you give it a title, 
put in your uh, FTP upload name, no secure FTP yet. Um, and on the next page, don't want to do now, you fill in all your um, standard metadata for the actual uh, podcast. And then every time you hit something and hit publish, it will actually download the feed, add your newest episode to it, all the metadata, upload the file, and you should be set to go. We also have other different kinds of uploads, so you can upload to, to SoundCloud and other stuff. If you are going to make enhanced podcasts, we do have the chapter feature. This is where you can add timers, like or chapter markers as we call them. You can see them as uh, yellow markers. And you can drag and drop in an image, give it a title and add a URL link. Yesterday we heard a lot of about the future of the Podlog player and all the new metadata that's going in there. And it would actually be really natural for us to actually add stuff or even make it kind of scriptable so that you can make a configuration file that says which columns you want here. And you can add stuff like geolocation, Wikipedia links or something like that. And then we just have to figure out together with the Podlog player team how to actually transfer this to the player. So for now, you can what you can use this for is actually to put it in the enhanced podcast file. And that's the reason for the limitation of the fields right now. We also have a built-in call recorder, which is working together with Skype. I actually need to allow Skype. So now it's connected, I can go in and say... Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your so message will now be played it's actually, back to you. Please read something back to me. Ding. Ah, ten. Please read something back to me. So, ding. Dip. So nice and easy. You get the your track and the other participants on the Skype call on a separate track, and you can edit as you want to. We actually have a new upcoming feature that makes it really easy because right now I can cut something out and now my interview is out of sync. Um, this is a pre-build of the upcoming because I can select across several tracks if I can stop doing this. Like this, then it would actually be in sync when I cut something but it's kind of annoying to be able to do this all the time. So now you can actually select two tracks, right click, say link, and then every time I select, it selects across both. And speaking of multiple tracks, we've actually had a lot of really annoying German podcasters <laughs> that says we want to be able to record more than one thing at a time. <laughs> Um, so now we actually got a new field over here where you can select different stuff. So now it is actually possible to record ARM several tracks at a time. Uh, this one actually selected other applications. Uh, I know many of you are actually Mac people and you have to install Soundflower and then go into system preferences and route everything to Soundflower. 
and then you can select Soundflower within your audio application and then you can't hear anything. So on Windows it's much easier. You select, I just want to record other applications. Uh, so now I should start it. And I go to... Guten Tag, wünsche euch und willkommen zu unserem Abreißtag von LA. Und Unser Kofferraum ist komplett voll. Und ich bin recording the building like at the same time. Oh, oh, hype, hype, hype. Nice. Okay, wie fahren Sie Flughafen? Someone speaking in German. So, but that's all nice and easy. And another thing that's actually really hard for people to find out is how to connect hardware. Because Normally, when you connect something, you need to restart your program and everything. And here we have plug and play. So now I should actually be able to find my iRig microphone. And we're going to enable that as well. Uh, that's actually a bug. Now I have them both. And I should be able to start recording. And now you might think, but what if one of my participants in my, Skype, my call is actually on Skype? Well, let's bring in our Skype participant. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. Is. After the beep, so please record recording a message. At time. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. No, you don't need to play anything back to me today. And I should be able to stop everything. And again, the magic should happen. You didn't notice it. I'll just undo it. It did actually auto level everything. So again, also if you're speaking, it'll put your all your stuff at the right level. And then the big question is, what is the right level? We have been working together with the European Broadcast Union, or been participant in the loudness, and they said, well, minus 23 LUFS is a nice level for radio, because then we have ample headroom and lots of uh, room for peaks and stuff. But the thing is that if you create a podcast at minus 23, which is a nice level for radio, but not a nice level for podcasts. Uh, I actually listen to a lot of podcasts, and especially on the train and out in the traffic, you can't hear if it's that low. So we do have a, a built-in setting where you can actually change your levels a bit between the EU, the UK, and the US modes, but they are all very low. So the new thing that we're coming out with is that when you export, you can actually go in and say options. I want this to be on a podcast friendly level, I mean minus 16. Uh, for now, we actually didn't give you the option to decide the numbers because, well, sometimes standards are good, but sometimes you get too many standards. So I can export, and of course, this is not in real time, so it didn't take long. That was basically what I had to say. Do you have any questions? Sie können gerne in Deutsch fragen. I got a question. What about the different timings on different um, audio devices? So, for example, USB microphone or external 
um, whatever um, audit interfaces and stuff like that. So, um, do you get la um, problems with the um, latency or, or with um, you know getting out of sync? Well, currently, actually, we do have this where you can mix and match interfaces, especially like using USB microphone. And yes, they will probably get out of sync if they cannot agree on the sample rate, meaning that. Well, if you plug in a 48 kilohertz device and the rest of it is 44.1, we will actually resample. Um, on the go, or um, you have to do it in advance, or um no, no, we're actually automatically re resampling on the go. But if if uh, two devices both claim to be 44.1 and one is 44.099 and one is 44.101, they will drift over time as it is currently. On Mac, you can create those virtual audio devices, which actually takes care of uh, resampling them um, to, in relation to each other. And we will add a similar feature, but not right now. Um, additional question, if nobody's... Um Uh, hi, I'm using Hindenburg quite a time now, but uh, what I didn't see was this export path where you could export to SoundCloud and so on and so forth. And uh, my question is the published part, right? Could you also do something here for Ophonic? Because most of the German podcasters do something like they make something up in Hindenburg, a podcast, and then export that as a, most of the time lossless format and import that to Ophonic, where everything is cleaned up, and Ophonic is a real great service for that. Well, we can actually ask Georg, do you have an API where we can easily upload? Yes, he has. Well, then it's, of course, something we that should look into. That would be so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, you actually mentioned the, the word lossless. Is that flag or...? Yeah. Actually, currently we don't have support for FLAC. Uh, I'm exporting this with the Mac options, like not FLAC, with the M4, M4A. Uh, Sorry. Apple lossless. Apple lossless. Yeah. yeah. Okay, hi. Um, I was wondering if uh, Hindenburg does support uh, screen readers on Windows or VoiceOver on the Mac. Uh, VoiceOver on Mac, no. Okay. But Untitled. Hindenburg Journalist Pro Window. Uh, vol 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 volume up. Untitled. Hindenburg Journalist Pro Window. So we Tool actually tip. did volume. We actually did add, add some um, accessibility enhancements in the newest version, so that it's it's not fully accessible, but at least you can find out your markers. Uh, it still works basically as a tape recorder where you can go back and forth. Uh, but actually one of the really important stuff that we added now is that you can find out... Alt. Zero minutes. 36 seconds. You can now... Focus on 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 20 minutes. Right. 20, 22 minutes. Right arrow. Tw 22 minutes. 56 seconds. Now you can actually fully accessible change the, the place of the playhead and go, go to that uh, place in the uh, position. Track. Okay. Uh, and what would it take to make it accessible on, on the Mac? What uh, uh, visual toolkit do you use there? Do you use Coco? Uh, no. We're actually uh, back on Carbon. But we, we can use Coco if we need to. Uh, okay, because if you used uh, Coco, it would be easy to do like the all the NS accessibility um, protocol stuff for the different things. But yeah, we could we could talk about that offline if you yeah. like. So, but the thing is that due to our graphics requirements, we actually start out with a, a basically a black area of the screen, and then we're draw, drawing all the buttons. So we're not, we're not using the actual Coco or Carbon buttons. Okay. Everything is, is drawn from scratch, but uh, all the accessibility improvements that we made for Windows, they should be made in a cross-platform manner so that we can actually uh, enable uh, voiceover on Mac. I have been dabbling a bit with it, but uh, time didn't permit at the time, so, but yes, it's getting in there. Thanks.
You're welcome. And another feature With request. Exiting narrator. Um, you have a Skype call recorder. It's me again. <laughs> uh, you have a Skype call, call recorder. How about Mumble and other stuff where you can make calls with? Mm, we actually did investigate um, the, the two major, which is uh, FaceTime and Google Hangouts. And neither of those really have an API that we can hook into. Oh, both so. of those are not really good for podcasting. No. Lots of podcasters use Mumble as a server. Right. So it's something we could look into. Um, we actually also have kind of, I can't say planned yet, but we actually <clears throat> want to create something like Source Connect, um, a really high quality Opus codec, um, and even possibly creating something like a low quality real time, and then actually transferring the high quality lossless audio in the background. And because we are an audio editor, we would actually be able to do this instead of just a plugin for Pro Tools. Um, I got a question um, about the whole project. Is it now drifting into the podcasting software or is it still a interview recording software for journalism? Or what is the focus? Is the focus now the features that we sought for the podcasting? Is it something that we'll develop further? So it, it will be. Yeah, hopefully in the end some kind of what the community can use and um, the features that we are, for example, our phonic um, APIs and Mumble stuff, this is actually what um, the community needs? Or is it still focused on interviewing yeah, people and journalism? Where is, where is the, the focus for the software? Well, the focus is, is it, that it's all about the story. So if you've got a good story to tell, we should be the software to do it. So, yes, we are primarily for independent radio producers, we actually have a hard time getting into the real big radio stations because they have automation systems and stuff that they need to tie into. Um, so, but yes, we really want to, to make something for podcasters as well, as well. So, letzte Frage da hinten. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, um, I'm a quite heavy user of Hindenburg um, and I'm wondering if you planning to uh, implement um, the support of uh, trackpads on the Mac to pinch uh, for pinch gestures uh, for the, zooming in and out. The, that should al already be there. I actually made that four years ago. Um, now I'm not on a Mac. So with this, this is a Windows. Um, and there's no pinch zoom on my trackpad, but that, that is actually on my screen. <laughs> okay. So everything should be... Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. So...